Angie from the Squishy Monster TSM on YouTube and today I'm using a pan hobak, it's a kabocha pumpkin, to make a hobak chuk, which is a pumpkin or squash porridge. And we're going to puree after we roast it. It's going to be really creamy, thick and velvety and it's one of my mama's favorite soups. My two primary ingredients are my short green sweet glutinous rice and I want to soak that in cold water for at least two hours. So pour some water to cover. And then my other primary ingredient is going to be my squash. So I'm going to scrub him clean and cut him up. You slice him up, it'll reveal some really golden delicious meat. And so you also want to clean him of the seeds and these seeds are completely edible, much like sugar pumpkin seeds. And I have a recipe to make some really crisp and light ones so don't throw them away. So I'm going to gut him and then cut him up and place him on a baking sheet and put him in a very hot oven to roast for about an hour or so. I just pierced a fork through the skin and it's completely fork tender and it just slid right in. So now I'm just separating the skin from the flesh so that I can begin blitzing it. Now we're ready to blend everything together. So on the bottom of my blender I have my soaked rice and in the water that it was sitting in and I'm going to grind it as finely as possible and then blend in or puree in my roasted squash with as much water because you want to do it as much uh, or as little water as you want depending on the consistency that you desire. I just wanted to pour out just a little bit of my ground up rice to show you the consistency and how it looks. It looks very milky, almost as if you had ground together your own almond milk. So that's what's in my blender and I'm going to puree in my squash. I have my pot set on low and I'm going to pour in my pureed everything. It's a nice velvety mixture of that golden squash and that finely ground up rice. Basically, we essentially made a rice flour, but the homemade version, and just pour it out. I ended up using about a cup and a half, but you can use up to three cups, just depending, like I said, on the consistency that you're looking for. So, there in goes my squash, and then I want to drizzle in, I have a combination of agave and maple syrup, but you can use brown sugar, regular sugar, and additionally, you could also use stock to boost up the flavor, but I really wanted to go with a neutral base of water so I could kind of really get that flavor of the squash to come through, and I thought the maple would be a really nice uh, accompaniment to this. So just give it a stir and let it simmer, and it's pretty much done. So I've simmered my soup for about 30 minutes, just until the rice got really tender, the rice powder that is. I want to finish off with just a little bit of salt to really accent that natural sweetness of the squash. Give it a stir and now we can ladle and serve. A lot of care and consideration went into creating this soup and I see why now. My mama, growing up, she loved it so much. Didn't appreciate it as a kid, but I now completely understand. So let's see how it tastes. And see, as soon as you dip your spoon into that, it is so thick and creamy. It's got great body, especially from that rice flour. Mm. That goes down like velvet. It is not overbearingly sweet. It's got a hint of savoriness to it. And it's golden nectar color of it kind of makes you think of warmer days because it is so cold and freezing outside nowadays. It's like a little bear hug. It is so delicious and comforting. I hope you guys try it out and try it for yourselves. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. This is Angie from the Squishy Monster TSM and I'll see you guys very soon.